Side C is pressing the B key by itself, and then you find the middle key here. Hey, my sax playing friend, Alexander here from saxophonemasterclass.com. In today's lesson, I'm gonna be showing you an alternative fingering for C on the saxophone. So this is a fingering that you might not know as a beginner, and really, as a beginner, you should be focusing on that middle C fingering, which I'm also gonna show you. But as you advance on the saxophone, you're gonna find this side C really useful. So I'm gonna show you that side C, and I'm gonna show you when you should be using the side C in your saxophone playing. It's gonna depend on the song you're playing. It's gonna depend what notes you're you're coming from on the saxophone. There's a lot of different factors that go into choosing which C you should be using when you're playing the sax. So I'm going to be showing you the side C fingering up close, but if you want you can download my fingering chart absolutely free at saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash fingerings and I give you all the fingerings for every note on the saxophone including all the alternative fingerings. So there's a few different alternative fingerings on the sax and the side C is just one. There's alternative fingerings for the B flat note, there's alternative fingerings for the F sharp note and I actually have videos on those fingerings as well. I'll link to those at the end of this lesson but I give you all of those fingerings absolutely free inside that fingering chart. So go ahead and download it now if you want to be able to get every single fingering on the saxophone. So I'm going to start by showing you the middle C on the saxophone. So the middle C is this middle finger in the left hand pressing down the middle key. So we have B here, we have A here, and we have G here, and middle C is lifting up your first finger here and your third finger here. So that's middle C. Side C is pressing the B key by itself and then you find the middle key here on the side of the saxophone. So not this one, not this one, this is the side B flat key, it's this one, the side C. And it sounds like this. So now I'm gonna switch between the middle C and the side C and you're gonna hear that they're identical. So like I said, as a beginner, you should be just focusing on the middle C for now. And I have a video that explains how to improve the transition from B to C, which can be super difficult as a beginner. But as you get more advanced, you wanna start using the side C so you can play other passages with ease. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different examples of when you should be using the side C and when you should be using the middle C on the saxophone. So when you're going from B to C and then back to B again in a piece of music, using the side C key is preferable because all you have to do is keep your finger down on B, press the side C and go back to B again. And this is a lot easier than going from B to the middle C, which can be a hard transition because you're switching these two fingers. And alternating those two fingers can be super difficult if you're trying to go B to C quickly like this. So with the side key going from B to C, it's a lot easier and you can actually go in between those two notes really quickly as well. So that's a much easier transition than going from B to middle C like this. It's still possible, but it's a lot easier just to do it with the side key, and you can actually do a trill on those two notes really easily as well. So that's just one example of when you would use that side key. If you're going from B up to C, back down to B in a piece of music, using that side C key makes it super easy as opposed to using that middle C. So you might be thinking, well, why don't you use the side C all the time? It seems like an easier way to play that middle C. The problem is when you start going into the higher octave on the sax and you're transitioning from C to D, for example, it makes it super difficult to go from side C up to that D with the octave key. Let me show you what I mean. So if you're playing side C and you want to transition up into that D with the octave key, which is going into the second octave of the sax, it makes it a lot harder because there's a lot more movement happening with your fingers.
So when you're going from C to D with the octave key, it's preferable to use that middle C as it's actually an easier transition. Now that middle C to the D with the octave key is still not that easy to do, especially as a beginner, but I do have another video to help you with that transition. This is called the saxophone break and it's something really important for beginner sax players to work on, but you should definitely be practicing it using the middle C and not the side C. The side C is also really useful when you're doing a chromatic scale or when you're doing chromatic notes from B to C to C sharp. It's a lot easier to use a side C in that case as opposed to the middle C. Let me show you what I mean. So if you're going from B up to C then up to C sharp which is all the fingers up like that it's a lot easier to do the side C than to do the middle C. So play notes three notes going from B to side C to C sharp sounds like this. And then the opposite is true as well, going from C sharp down to C, then to B. It's a lot easier to use the side C than the middle C in this case. The middle C is going to be a little more complicated, and it's going to look like this. So really you should be using that middle C for the most part, but you can use that side C in certain circumstances, especially when you're trying to do a trill on B to C, or if you're trying to play from B up to C and then back down to B again, it's super useful to use that side C. So that's the side C and a couple of ways that you can use it. Again, if you want to get all the fingerings for the saxophone, including all the alternative fingerings on sax, go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash fingerings, and you can download the fingering chart absolutely free, no strings attached. So if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please let me know, please like the video and please subscribe and click that notification bell if you're looking for weekly free saxophone lessons from me. I'm putting out new videos all the time on how to improve your saxophone technique, how to improve your tone, how to start improvising on the saxophone, how to learn your favorite songs step by step. It's all on this channel. Check out my other videos on the different alternative fingerings on sax and how you can use them. I really hope you find them useful and until next time, happy playing.